This video is all about shifting exponential functions. I want you to take a look on your paper and look over where it says vertex form of an exponential function and it has this equation listed and then the parent function and the other equation listed. We start out with a parent function and then we complete a series of shifts to create our new function. What I really want you to notice here is the negative symbol in front of the H. We'll go back to that at a later point in the video. First, let's start recording our example. So the first example we're given is f of x is equal to 7 times 2 to the power of x minus 3 plus 5. The parent function, and I'll label this as p of x, you remember I'm referring to the parent function, is 7 times 2 to the power of x. We're going to begin by graphing the parent function and then looking at how we shift the parent function to create the function that's written in blue. I'm going to do this by creating an xy table. The first point I know I can graph is 0, 7 because the starting point is at 7. So 0, 7. Then I'm just going to plug in some values that will give me nice y values as a result. So when I plug in 1 for x, 2 to the power of 1 is 2, 2 times 7, I get 14, and I'll graph that, 1, 14. All right, 1, 14. And then I'll also graph negative 1. So an x value of negative 1 would give me 7 times 2 to the negative first. I'm going to flip this over the fraction bar so that it becomes 2 to the first, so I can deal with that exponent. 2 to the first is equal to 2. 7 divided by 2, I get 3.5. So negative 1, 3.5. Negative 1, 3.5. Now I know that the asymptote of this function is at y equals 0. So my exponential, I didn't do a very good job of drawing that, but you get the basic shape. My exponential is constantly approaching y equals 0, but never crosses it. Um, that's what an asymptote is. You, you have a function that's constantly approaching it, but never intersects with the asymptote. And there I have my parent function. Now, to go over to example 1, f of x equals 7 times 2 to the power of x minus 3 plus 5, we need to think about how we shifted the function. So first of all, h is equal to, now some people would say negative 3, that's incorrect, and I want you to pay attention earlier on the first page to this negative symbol. It's x minus h. So in this case, h is 3, and then we have that subtraction sign in front of it. So it's really a positive 3 is the shifting number that we use. k is equal to 5. So we move to the right 3 and then we move upwards 5. The part that is with the x controls the horizontal movement. The piece that stands alone controls the vertical movement. So I can literally take each one of the points that I graph for the parent function and come up with new points for the function that I was given just by shifting the parent function points. So I'm going to take this point right here, and I'm going to shift it to the right, 1, 2, 3, and then upwards 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I'm going to create my new point. And I'm going to make that black again. So we separate the parent function, which is black, from the um, blue function, so you can see the difference between the two. Now I'm going to take this point up here, and I'm going to move it to the right, 3, and then upwards 5. So the right 3, upwards 5, and then finally 
my negative 1, 3.5 this point, I'm going to move to the right, 1, 2, 3, and upwards 5. The other thing that you need to know is that the asymptote also moves. It would not matter if you move the asymptote left or right because y equals 0 goes on forever. So if you shift it left or right, it's not going to make a difference. What you need to be concerned about is the vertical movement. So the asymptote has the same vertical movement as our whole function, so it's going to be shifted upwards 5. I'll draw that in red, so I'm going to shift it up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So our new asymptote is at y equals 5. And then I'm ready to graph the new function, so I'm going to draw a connecting line. Oh, and I went too far. Let me try that again. And there's our new function, and it's constantly approaching, approaching that asymptote y equals 5, but it never crosses it. Another way we could have done this is we could have just created an xy table. So maybe you want to start with the point 0, 7, and one method you could use is you could add 3 to the x value, because the x-axis is the horizontal movement, and then you could add 5 to the 7, and we would get 3, 12. So 3, 12. And then I'm going to graph this in green. So 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We already graphed 3, 12 by taking the original parent function point and going over 3 and up 5. So this is just another method you can use. Instead of actually physically moving it on the graph, you could just add to a point you already have in a table you created. Here's another option. We could just plug in values into our new function. So for example, I might plug in, I'm going to choose something nice. Um, how about 4 for x? 4 minus 3, this is going to become 1. So 2 to the first times 7, we get 14. We add 5, we get 9. So 4, 19 is another point. Can't see that very well. 4, 19 is another point. And I'll graph this. 4, 19. Sorry, that took me a second to count out. 4, 19. And again, that was already there because we took um, our original point from the parent function, shifted it right and up 5. Let's come up with another nice number. So to plug in for x minus 3, Why don't we use 2 this time? 2 minus 3 gives me an exponent of negative 1, so this will look like 7 times 2 to the power of negative 1. I flip this over the fraction bar, and it becomes 7 divided by 2 plus 5. 7 divided by 2 is 3.5. 3.5 plus 5 is 8.5. So when I plug in 2, I get out 8.5. So 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Point five. And you'll see again, I already had a point there. What I wanted you to notice was how I chose my points. I was trying to get either 1 or negative 1 for the power of 2 so that I could easily figure out what the y value was. On the EOC, these are going to be the problems where you're not allowed to use your calculator, most likely. So you want to think about how you can make this mathematically simple so you can quickly complete this. Remember, you can always just go from the parent function, shifted to the right 3, up 5, to create your new function. And we're going to do the second example in another video.